Hi there, this is Danny, and the channel is You and Me Living Free. What I have for you today is just a few little hodgepodge videos put together to make a video. I, I, was, I visited Navajo Bridge, and it was pretty cool, but I just did a I just did a whole episode on like Glen Canyon Dam and that bridge and everything and I thought well I don't know if I want to do another whole bridge thing so I cut it down pretty really short uh, for Navajo Bridge and then there's just some random stuff like my first experience getting bitten by a fire ant <laughs> and ABC's of van life little tip and then um, maybe a couple things that I've been pictures of things that I've been eating in the van I'm having trouble um, just not kind of getting tired of everything that I'm used to making so I'm trying to branch out a little bit So if you have good stuff that here's my here's my criteria needs to be really simple um, And have the basics of ingredients I, I can't stand when a recipe makes me buy like one thing that I am never going to use again <laughs> Just to have it have a little bit of a taste in a certain recipe or something so keep it kind of basic Something I can make all in one pan. I love anything I can make in one pan preferably the skillet or the or the saucepan But if you have anything like that that you love then um, please do share <laughs> um, My favorite is probably my breakfast mixture, you know with the eggs and and onions and peppers and cheese and then I make a breakfast burrito that's probably my favorite but if you've been watching me you've heard me talk about that before um, also I do a lot of just cut up um, either prosciutto or hard salami or something and cheese with a little like hummus and chip or hummus and carrot or something for an easy meal where I don't have to cook anything because I do get tired of cooking in the van not only do I get tired of cooking because if it's 70, 75 degrees, and I'm in an area where it's not really easy to get out of the van, I might be in a city or something, and cooking inside the van, it can be kind of a hassle. So I really like to have easy, quick things ready and available that I can have with no heat or no stove or easy meals I can make and then I can have leftovers for a few days. So I'm open to suggestion. Here's just a few random little things that I threw together. I hope you like it. Let me know in the comments. Thanks. Okay, one of the basic rules of van life are the ABCs always be charging. <laughs> I'm charging my phone right now even though it doesn't really need charged, but it always needs a little something. So I'm like, always have my phone running if my car is on. Let me flip around the camera and I'll show you what, I, what else I've got going on. Charging my Lucy light. I don't think I could get through a day of van life without my Lucy light. I love that little thing so much. And I'm kind of charging this. This is activated charcoal and um, it, it's air purifying what does it say I think it's no it's bamboo charcoal but you put it in the Sun to activate it and then um, you can use it like a little scented thing it doesn't smell like anything but it absorbs odors if you have any in the van so I put it in the sunlight just in case I ever need it so it'll be charged I've got my phone plugged in right now but I've got my Jackery right here because I might go to a state park a little ways away and if I do then I will charge my Jackery as I drive on the road so no real transitions here we're just gonna hop from one <laughs> from one topic to the next I bought a frozen pizza okay I used to eat those these little Totino's pizza when I was a kid like when I was a teenager and I would come home from school or something and I would like throw one in and I decided to try to make it in my skillet I don't think I would have carried it around in my cooler and let it thaw out and then tried it. I did this like two hours after I got back from the grocery store. I just threw it in so it was still partially frozen but not all the way. I'm going to tell you this worked out surprisingly well. I, I noticed that the bottom was getting super crispy and the top was still cold versus not even hardly melty so I put the foil on to try to cook it a little more evenly it was it was actually delicious but I just saw it in the store I thought of my childhood I didn't have an oven so I gave this a try and I would say for a dollar 18 for lunch uh, I'll call it a big win <laughs> 
I would definitely do it again. And then here I'm just showing a grilled peanut butter and jelly. My friend um, introduced me to these a while ago and I really like it when I want something simple like a peanut butter and jelly, but I also want something warm. It's actually really yummy. I was doing some research online today to get some new ideas and I did think about um, maybe pesto, if I can find some decent pesto in a can and then, or in a jar and then some pasta and maybe even uh, some shrimp on top. But anyway, that's just a different flavor that I haven't had for a while while I've been on the road. And also I thought of um, sausage and veggie skillet with sausage and onions and peppers and stuff. Uh, that looked good. So anyway, at least I've got a couple things to make. Okay, now we're going to do Navajo Bridge. This is actually by the Vermilion Cliffs in that area. So I did that video a little while ago. But Navajo Bridge, this is cool. It has a little uh, bathroom and and kind of a rest area, an information center, and shop. There are two bridges right across from each other, the old bridge and the new bridge. The old bridge is the one that you walk across. The new bridge is the one uh, that we're looking at here that was made for the heavy trucks and everything, and it's meant to carry a lot more. The old one is what they let you walk on now. <laughs> which didn't do a whole lot for me and my fear of heights, but, um, you know, obviously I survived it. So here I am just walking up and I'm thinking to myself, okay, it looks very, very solid. This thing isn't going to move around a lot. It's got a lot of concrete. It's pretty wide. So if I walk toward the middle, I wouldn't have to be close to the edge. So I'm talking myself into it at this point. Here we have a couple more signs that nobody should need to have, but we have anyway. It's like, please don't throw anything from the bridge down below and please don't jump. Okay, so let's, now that we've got our bases covered, I thought that was kind of funny at the time. Now I don't think it's quite so funny. Um, I don't want to make a joke out of that. But anyway, I thoroughly enjoyed my walk and I thought it was pretty darn beautiful. I'm showing you here that I made it to the other side. There's evidence. And actually I think the walk back was even more beautiful than the walk there because of the backdrop. We can see if you agree. There's my smiling face. And two more silly signs. This is storm danger. If you're having lightning and thunder and high winds, it says leave the bridge and go back to your car. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'd have any problem doing that. And then again, don't throw anything for heaven's sakes in case we haven't emphasized it enough. But look at how gorgeous that is. And then just one more thought as I'm walking back across, I'm like, this is not what I need to see. This does not make me feel safe <laughs> looking at this. Like it's held together like with these little chains. <laughs> anyway. That's the old fear of heights talking, but th this bridge wasn't, it wasn't bad. It didn't, it didn't scare me hardly at all. And now just for the last minute, I'm going to tell you about my little fire ant incident. Let, let's call it the fire ant incident of 2021. I was at Pariah Beach and it was beautiful, but I was walking through the sand back to my car here. I want to give you a quick, super quick warning right here. You are going to see up close pictures of my feet now. I am aware that some people hate the sight of bare feet. I have a friend who is this way, so I'm doing this for her. So if you hate the sight of bare feet, please don't watch the rest of this video. I love you. Bye. Catch you next time. So at this point in my little adventure, everything is great. And as I'm walking back to the car, I walked through... Um, a bit a big sandy area to get down to the beach and I did notice these red ants walking around and so then I was feeling some discomfort inside my sandal where the strap comes across and I thought I might have gotten a little burr in there or something so I stopped and took off my shoe and I noticed a, a red ant that was like stuck to my foot he was really attached and dug in there somehow and so I flipped him off I did not take a picture of him I was in too much pain I was I was I really just wanted him off of me and so then I'm taking pictures so here's the thing Right after it happened, I was like, okay, no big deal. But this is a couple of hours later and you can see the redness. And here I'm showing you that my foot is all swollen. 
As I'm looking at this now, I realize how bad my big toe looks, but that was actually damage done from my kayaking accident. And if you have not seen that video, I will link it in the description because that was some hairy stuff indeed. Anyway, that's why my toe looks like that. But here's the thing with the fire ant. It wasn't just like it bit a certain area and then that the little area that it bit was like sore or whatever. This was pain all the way through my foot and my whole foot, almost my whole foot was swollen. I had pain in a probably a four or so inch radius around the bite and, and it was through my whole foot that was in pain, but it only lasted about 12 hours or so. And actually I took some ibuprofen before I went to bed, I put some ice on it. And then by the time I woke up the next day, I was fine. <laughs> but thank goodness it was only one fire ant and um, I'm happy to be done with that experience. So boo fire ants. And um, you made it to the end of this video. I can't believe it. I'm rambling even more than usual. And I appreciate you so much. I will catch you next time. Bye.